a protest in New York City on April 15th, just a few days ago. They're, they're out of the closet now. I mean, it used to be that they were pretending that it was about protecting Gazans, their opposition to Israel taking out Hamas. They tried to pretend that for like a hot second. There are a few problems with that. Number one, it clearly was untrue. They were protesting Israel between the October 7th attacks and Israel's retaliation against Hamas. Second, they're going out to rallies now and just waving Hezbollah flags and Hamas flags and all the like. Here we go. What's that shit? You're on my side. You're on my side. What are you you can see a person waving a yellow flag. That yellow flag is the flag of Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a terror group. It is a it is a terrorist group, and they are waving the flag of. Hezbollah. First of all, how do you even obtain a flag of Hezbollah? Can you get that on Amazon? Like, where do you get that? My guess is not from good people. I don't feel like you're heading down your local Salvation Army and picking up a Hezbollah flag. Well, don't worry. They were also wearing Hamas headbands at this rally, so that was great. Here is some footage of them wearing. Hamas headbands, as you'll see in just a moment. There we go. So we're in a kafia and a Hamas headband. Again, I'm not sure where you get the Shahada, which is the Hamas headband, which which uh, pledges martyrdom, or why you would be in the United States wearing it. But it seems to me that that's kind of a threat to the United States. You are a terror supporter. You like terrorism. Hamas is a terror group. Not just that. Just in case you were worried that, that maybe it really isn't about America at all. They burned American flags and chanted death to America at this rally. So, you know, they're being pretty obvious about this sort of stuff. So what happened here is a pro-Israel student from Colombia brought an American flag. The protesters grabbed the flag, stomped on it, and then tried to set it on fire. So, yeah, delightful group of people. The good news is pro-Palestinian activists, they think that death to America is just like a normal phrase. It's just a thing you say. Right? It's like how around the holiday seasons you say Merry Christmas to people. I mean, when, I, when, when people say death to America, apparently it's just like, you know, aloha in Hawaii or something. What do you think about people chanting death to America as they did in one video clip? I, I think that that's just a phrase maybe said by an individual. Well, no, a whole, the whole crowd began joining in. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. Happen. So th Not this guy, this guy said it and then the whole crowd began chanting it. What would you condemn that? I'm here to talk about the entire well, hang on. Israeli You're here to answer government. my questions, actually. Would you condemn what they were chanting, death to America? I think we should condemn Palestinians actually being killed. Okay. I think that... And That's not the question I'm asking you. So I will ask you about Gaza. Um, but on the question I asked you, would you condemn people in America chanting death to America? What do you say? I don't condemn how people choose to express their rage verbally. I don't condemn that because at the end of the day, the reason they're saying that is because the U.S. is sending the tax dollars and the weapons that are actually creating so do you support, death. Do you support Gaza. them chanting death to America? I don't I don't chant that myself. So I don't know why but you're do you trying support to trap the, me in this no, type of I'm asking uh, you to argument. condemn it. You don't want to. OK, well, there's a reason she doesn't condemn it because she's fine with it. It's just a phrase people use, you know, because they're mad because they like Hamas. I got to tell you guys about the greatest invention of all time. It really is fantastic. My team recently introduced me to the pod cover by 8sleep. It's a super high-tech solution to managing your temperature while you sleep. So I've got a big problem when I sleep. I tend to heat up like a lot, but this thing really works. The cover fits over my bed like a fitted sheet. My wife and I adjusted the settings so she can be a little warmer and I can be a little cooler. You can go as low as 55 degrees or as high as like 110 degrees. So if you like sleeping in a jacuzzi or something. Plus, autopilot features will adjust the temperature of the bed so you can stay asleep longer. If you're one of those people who likes to track all your health metrics, like your heart rate, Pod covers got you covered. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just one month on the pod. I rarely get this excited for technology, but I'm telling you guys, this is the future of sleep. Forget the tossing and the turning or getting up in the middle of the night to adjust the temperature for the whole house. Reclaim your sleep. Head on over to 8sleep.com slash Shapiro. Get 200 bucks off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8sleep. That's 8sleep.com slash Shapiro. Get 200 bucks off the pod cover. Meanwhile, by the way, that is an opinion that is also apparently held by progressive representatives. Here's Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, who is a member of the Hamas squad. She was asked about the protesters chanting death to America. And she's like, oh, I didn't hear it. Don't know anything about it. Uh, okay. The, the queen of TikTok knows nothing about the TikTok pro Hamas next. Does it sound like this is pro-Palestinian or anti-American if they're burning American flags and chanting death to America? I'm, I'm not privy to... So I haven't seen these reports. I'd have to check for them myself. Do you support burning the American flag and chanting death to America? 
Anti-Israel protesters blocking the Brooklyn Bye. Bridge burned the American flag and chanted death to it's America. Do you condemn this type of rhetoric? We've got to get her on to her next event. Here. Are you okay with people burning the American flag? We're in a big hurry, guys. Yes. She's walking, no answer. That is an unbelievable thing. By the way, it should be an every Republican campaign ad against these people. And if Republicans had their heads out of their asses and weren't too busy shooting each other, they might, you know, direct their fire at the progressives in the Democratic caucus, who are well-respected and treated with the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, who literally cannot condemn people burning the American flag. It turns out the American people don't like that very much. Meanwhile, the Columbia president was at a hearing on the Hill I know a lot of students at Columbia. The anti-Semitism at Columbia has been extraordinary. Huge levels of, of anti-Semitism, including against some professors who have been, in some cases, physically confronted. But this Columbia president learned her lesson. So you remember last time, there was a congressional hearing with university presidents, including Claudine Gay of Harvard, who's no longer the president. They refused to suggest that from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Genocidal calls for the destruction of Jewry were anti-Semitic. The uh, Columbia president learned her lesson and she gave a little more ground. Were you aware of those statements before the hiring? I share with you your repugnance at those remarks. I understand that. On my watch, faculty who make remarks that cross the line in terms of anti-Semitism, there will be consequences for them. What are the I have consequences five, I have in five this case? cases at the moment who have either been dis either taken out of the classroom or dismissed. And is he one of those? He will, he will never work at Columbia again. Columbia has learned its lesson. Okay, so the Columbia president is trying to wiggle out of the fact that Columbia has been extraordinarily tolerant toward anti-Semitism, but it seems like maybe the worm is beginning to turn a little bit here. It turns out that even mainstream leftists are beginning to realize that the pro-Hamas people, maybe not their best political friends. Maybe they're a problem. So I had urged yesterday Google to fire all of the idiot employees who occupied their offices. And they did. According to the Wall Street Journal, Google has now fired 28 employees who protested this week against the tech giant's cloud computing contract with the Israeli government. In a company-wide email, Vice President for Global Security Chris Rakow said that Google dismissed the employees after an investigation found they were involved in the protests at the company's offices in New York and Sunnyvale, California. The protests were unacceptable, extremely disruptive, and made coworkers feel threatened, Rakow said. The overwhelming majority of our employees do the right thing. If you're one of the few who are tempted to think we're going to overlook conduct that violates our policies, think again. Well, good for Google. Because this is the way companies ought to work. Maybe the worm is beginning to turn. Maybe the radicals are starting to lose some of the steam. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 